Day 18. The Magical To-Do List The world is full of magical things awaiting for our wits to grow sharper. Adam Philippot's novelist and poet. Really, when you think about it, gratitude is your best friend. It is always there for you, always available to help you. It will never fail you or let you down. And the more heavily you lean on it, the more it will do for you and the more it will enrich your life. Today's magical practice will show you how to lean on gratitude even more so it can do far more magical things for you. Every day there are little life problems that comes up and that need solving. Sometimes we can feel overwhelmed if you don't know how to solve a situation. Maybe your problem is that you don't have enough time for all the things you need to do and you are at a loss because there are only 24 hours in a day. It may be that you feel overwhelmed from work and you want more free time, but you can't see any way to have it. You may be at home taking care of children and you are feeling frazzled or exhausted, but you don't have the means to get support to give your time out. You may be faced with a problem that needs fixing, but you have no idea which way to turn to fix it. You may have lost something and tried your best to locate it but had no luck. Or you might want to find something like a perfect pet, perfect babysitter, great hairdresser or amazing dentist or doctor and despite your best effort, you haven't been able to find what you need. You could be in an uncomfortable situation because of something a person has asked you to do and you don't know how to respond to them. Or you could be in some kind of dispute with someone and instead of getting results, things seem to be getting worse. This magical to-do list practice will help you with any little day-to-day -day problems when you don't know what to do or when you simply want something to be done for you. You will be amazed at the results. When you combine gratitude's magical power with the law of attraction, people, circumstances and events must be rearranged to do what you want done for you. You will not know how it will happen or how it will be done for you. And that is not your job. Your job is simply to be as grateful as you can for what you want done right now as though it were done. And then let the magic happen. Today, create a written to-do list of the most important things you would like to be done or resolve for you. And title your list the magical to-do list. You might put things on your list that you don't have time to do or don't want to do along with any current problems, from the smallest day-to-day -day things to bigger life situations. Think about any area of your life where you need something resolved or done for you. When you finish making the list, choose three things from your list to focus on today and one at a time imagine that each item has been magically done for you. Imagine that all people, circumstances and events have been moved to do it for you and it is now done, all done, all sorted all solved for you and you are giving massive thanks in written for it having been done. Spend at least one minute on each of your three items believing it is done and feeling enormous gratitude in return. You can follow the same practice on the rest of the items in your list at another time but there is power in simply putting the things you want done on the magic to do list. Remember that a law of attraction says like attracts like and that means when you are grateful for the solution as though you have them, you will attract everything you need into your life to resolve the situation. Focusing on problems attracts more problems. You have to be a magnet to the solution, not a magnet to the problem. Being grateful that you have the solution and that it has been resolved attracts the solution. To demonstrate how powerful this magical practice is, I want to share a story with you about my daughter who used this practice to attract her lost wallet. After being out one night, my daughter discovered the next morning that she did not have her wallet and she had no idea where she might have lost it or even if it had been stolen. She called the restaurant where she went to dinner, the taxi company she used to come home, the local police station and she searched the streets and knocked on surrounding doors but no one had found her wallet. Other than the fact that my daughter's wallet contained the usual precious things in it, including all her bank and credit cards, driver's license and cash, her biggest concern was that her wallet contained no current contact information because she had been overseas for some time. She didn't have a publicly listed phone number 
and with a common surname, there seems to be no hope. But despite the seemingly impossible obstacle, my daughter sat down, closed her eyes, and got a picture of her wallet in her mind. She visualized that she was holding her wallet in her hands. She opened her wallet and she went through all its contents, and she felt enormous gratitude that she had her wallet and everything in it back in her hands. For the rest of the day, wherever she thought of it, again my daughter imagined she had her wallet in her hands. And she felt enormous elation and gratitude that her wallet had been returned to her. Later that night, she received a call from a farmer who lived 100 miles away, saying that he had found her wallet. The extraordinary part of the story is that the farmer had found the wallet in the street outside my daughter's home in the early hours of the morning and he immediately searched the wallet looking for contact details. He made several calls in trying to find its owner but to no avail. So he gave up and drove back to his farm with the wallet. But while he was walking out in the fields at his farm, the wallet kept nagging and nagging at him and he decided to search through it one last time. He found a small piece of paper with a man's Christian name written on it and he put the Christian name together with my daughter's surname and called a directory assistance. There was just one listing for that Christian name and surname. The farmer called a phone and it was the home of my daughter's father. To this day, we do not know how the farmers called that phone number because it was an unlisted number. We called directory assistance ourselves several times after this happened and the response every time was, sorry, there is no listing for that name. From 100 miles away, through the most extraordinary sequence of seemingly impossible events, my daughter's wallet was written to her in death. She fulfilled her part in being grateful that she had her wallet back. And as must happen, gratitude performed its magic and moved every person, circumstance and events to return her wallet to her. The magical power of gratitude is available for you to use as well. And it always has been. You just have to discover it for yourself and learn how to use it. Magic practice number 18. The magical to-do list. First, count your blessings. Make a list of 10 blessings. Write why you are grateful. Read it to your list and at the end of each blessing, say thank you, thank you, thank you and feel as grateful for that blessing as you can. Second, create a little list of the most important things or problems you need done or solve. Title your list the magical to-do list. Three, Choose three of the most important things from your list and while the time, imagine that each thing had been done for you. Spend at least one minute on each thing, believing it is done and feeling enormous gratitude in return. Fifth, just before you go to sleep tonight, hold your magic rock in one hand and say the magic words thank you for the best thing that happened during the day.